Hello. Today we're going to demonstrate subfunctions and function handles by implementing a numeric integration over a particular mathematical expression. And the mathematical expression that we're going to integrate is this one here, the power law, which is a times x to the b. So on the left hand side what I've got is uh, the skeleton of a function int power law which once we write it will implement uh, the integration of the power law of these coefficients a, b over the range uh, supplied in a vector x lim here. So an example of how you would use it, suppose you wanted to integrate 2 times x to the 0 0.3 over the range from 0 to 3, this is how you would do it. So what I've got on the right here is just an example of using the function that I'm about to write. And so that can be helpful when you're trying to plan out how your things are going to work is actually write an example or maybe two or three of how you would use the code. And so that forces you to uh, be very clear about exactly what it is that your function should do and what's the input that you need to provide. So let's go ahead and implement this. So the first thing that I'm going to need is a subfunction that implements the mathematical expression that we're trying to integrate. So that's something that implements that power law. So I'm going to create a subfunction here that will output to a variable r, and I'm going to call it, let's say, power law. And so power law, what does a power law need to know? It needs to know the coefficients, which are a, b, and also the value x that we're evaluating at. So inside here, a times x to the b. Now I want this to work for a vectorized x values, or if x is a vector, so I need to put a dot here for the power. I don't need a dot here on the multiply because a is a scalar. So it's OK to leave that as uh, simply a normal multiply operation there. OK, so now that I've written my subfunction, I should test it. And this is where you have to be you have to be careful here because this subfunction is not available to general code. If I run power law down here in the command window, it won't work because remember, subfunctions are only accessible to other code in the same file as them. So the same M file here. So what I need to do is actually be able to have code that runs in the context of this uh, this function here. And so a convenient way to do that is just to put in some kind of dummy line here and set a breakpoint. And so then what will happen is once we reach this point, now I'll be able to interact with my function down here in the command window, but it will happen in the context of this function. So let's go over here to our tester script and run it. And so then we get to this point here, the green arrow shows us that the program is currently at this point here, it's about to run line 8, which is just this empty display call. Down here in the command window now I can interact with the function that I've just written. So I can run power law, let's try that for example. And as expected, uh, that's the answer is 3. So I can try a vectorized form like that. And let's just try one more example. If I put 0 0.5 here, that should give us the square roots of those numbers. And yes, that looks right. So now that I've gotten that uh, power law, or now I've tested my subfunction, I'll go on and write the rest of my code. So what I'll do is I'll just press continue up here, and so what that means is that the function, the code will continue to run until it either ends or it reaches another breakpoint. So I run that. Okay, we've got an error down here, which is this, that output argument result was not assigned. And the reason for that is that this function has promised that it will return a result, but we didn't actually do that. So that is, of course, an error over here in our script. The script wants to do something with that result, but we don't actually produce a result here, so that's why we're getting that error. So let's go ahead and implement that, which implement this function, which will fix that error. So result is equal to, what I'm going to do is use a MATLAB routine here called quad. So what quad does is this, it numerically evaluates an integral using uh, what's called adaptive Simpson quadrature. So don't worry about that, that's just the numerical algorithm that's used. The important thing for us is that this is the operation that it's doing, so integrating a function f of x from a to b, and this is the syntax for how we call it. So let's go ahead and write that. Now the function that we're integrating here is power law, but we need a handle to that function. We don't want to actually run that function just yet. We want to get just the address of it so that quad can go and run it later when it's ready to. So the lower limit of integration is the first element in my xlim vector, and the upper limit is the second element 
in the xlim vector. So if I actually run this code as it is now, there will be an error. So let me show you that. And the error is this, input argument x is undefined. Now that's a little bit cryptic. So let's have a look at what's going on here. Let's read through the, this is called a stack trace. This is where uh, the code was up to at each point. So the top line here, this is a clickable link that will jump to the point where the error occurred. So the error occurred here on line 10 inside this function. So let's set a breakpoint there and then run it and now we can have a look at around and see what's going on before the error actually happens. So now we're here inside this sub function. Notice the, the green arrow here says we're about to run this line. There's a, a, like a white arrow at the top here, which means that this overall top level function is actually up to line seven. That line is currently running. But inside that line, quad went and called this function. So now we've come back to this file and we're up to here. So let's have a look at what's going on. Let's have a look at our variables. So the first variable that we have is A, which is this here. Now remember that A should be simply a scalar, and so we're getting a vector here, so that should indicate to us that there's something going wrong. Let's have a look. B doesn't exist, and X doesn't exist. So why is that happening? Let's go back and look at the quad function. So quad is expecting a function that takes one argument. So the function Y equals function of X should accept a vector argument X and return a vector result y. Okay. Whereas our function here actually has three arguments, a, b, and x, and quad is expecting it to have only one. So what can we do about that? Let's just abort this program. We know what the problem is, so I'll cl click this exit debug mode here, and that just stops it in its tracks. So what we can do about this, we want something that only takes a single argument. So let's delete A and B here. Now, this is where the features of MATLAB variable scope will come in handy for us. Notice that the variables A and B here change color. They're now uh, this light blue color. And so what that means here is that the editor is telling us that this variable B and this variable B are actually the same thing. So remember that a variable inside a subfunction a uh, subfunction can share variables with the function above it. So if you have a variable inside a subfunction which has the same name as one of the variables in the function above, then those two will refer to the same thing. So this power law function here, by virtue of sharing the workspace, is able to access that coefficients a and b. So let's save that now and run it again. And so now we get to this point here, and so now we're inside this function. So let's just have a look. A has the value 2, which came from over here. B has the value 0 0.3, that came from over here. And notice that this function has access to those values, despite the fact that they weren't passed in specifically as parameters. And let's check x is the vector of values that Quad is trying to evaluate this function at. So that all looks good. So what I'll do is clear the breakpoint here, and then run the rest of the program. Just press continue to let it run. And so what happened here was this line was printed actually by line 7 over here in my script. So the answer that came out of our thing was uh, 6.41. So we can change those numbers if we want and run it again and we get a different number.